Hello, hello to all you beautiful souls. Grand glorious rising to everybody. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. I do. If anybody does need to reach me, you can look in the description box below. Please take a moment to read it. I've updated it. I am a guide, not your healer. I am my healer. I am a guide and a life coach. And it's been an amazing journey and I'm so grateful for this journey. As I bring forward messages, it also helps me heal. It helps me keep going. Because usually when I quit YouTube, I quit reading all of my stuff. That's what happened. Sometimes I just have to take a break. Instead of saying I quit, I have to take time and do what's best for me. To keep my mind right, I get so frustrated that I stand up for myself and a lot of people see ego and it's not ego. Never have I ever thought I was better than anyone else. I was always told I was not even nearly as good as everyone else. So now that I know who I am, I like to bring forth messages to help everybody remember our purpose here on earth. It's to shine our light, put on your love light. What's today? It seems like I missed uh, somebody's birthday on the 13th, the magic number 13. And we love everyone, no matter what they believe. But we don't have to allow, we, we try to stay high vibe here. I've had to leave so many channels, close doors on so many people and walk away because they just aren't getting it. And it really does break my heart. I was talking about letting go of the fear of abandonment on the 12th of July. Oh, we are lovable was yesterday's. It's the 15th. Who knows? I don't really, it's hard for me to keep track of this, or all this 3D realm sometimes. Blend in, get into fit in. Oh darn, family buttons. Shucks. It's good to let a little sunshine out as well as in. It is good to get outside. Stop putting the sunblock on your skin. All those chemicals. Absorb the sunshine. Get outside off your phones, please. Go connect with the earth. Just step outside of your door. And I know lots of people are doing it. And some people are not. They sit inside on electronics all day. All day long. They don't go get some fresh air. They don't go step outside for 10 minutes in the sun. They don't get some of the natural melatonin and vitamin D in our eyeballs. All the things from the sunshine. Some people are afraid of the sun. Like some are afraid of cars. My child was deathly afraid of the spirits that she saw. And I said, it's nothing to fear. Think of it like a gift, the sixth sense. And some people might not cross over until peace is made. Until the messages are brought forth. Like the movie, The Sixth Sense. And we're all so gifted in so many ways. So I'm going to read yesterday's. July 14th. Even... We are lovable in the language of letting go. And I'm going to put a link to find this down below. Because I am not going to read any of these very soon. At all. I'm not going to upload it. I'm not going to stream these books live anymore. But these are such powerful books. The Language of Letting Go. Daily Meditations for Codependency. And Addiction Recovery. They're Hazelden books. She went to Hazelden. It's in Minnesota. I wrote the man who advocates for insurance companies to pay for people to get treatment. We are lovable. Even if the most important person in your world rejects you, you are still real and you are still okay. Codependent No More is the book. I highly, highly recommend this book for everyone. 
addiction recovery. How to stop controlling others and start caring for yourself. How to stop worrying about all the other stuff. Controlling anything. How about that? Controlling anything outside of yourself. Release control. Relinquish control is the card. Two days ago. Do you ever find yourself thinking, how could anyone possibly love me? For many of us, this is a deeply ingrained belief that can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Thinking that we are unlovable can sabotage our relationships with co-workers, friends, family members, and other loved ones. This belief can cause us to choose, stay in, or stay in relationships that are less than we deserve because we don't believe we deserve better. We may become desperate and cling as if a particular person was our last chance at love. We may become defensive and push people away. I'll leave you before you leave me, right? We may withdraw or constantly overreact. We're, we're working on all these behaviors now, right? Well, growing up, many of us did not receive the unconditional love we deserved. Many of us were abandoned or neglected by important people in our life. We may have concluded that the reason we weren't loved was because we were unlovable. Blaming ourselves is an understandable reaction, but an inappropriate one. If others couldn't love us or love us in ways that worked, that is not our fault. In recovery, we're learning to separate ourselves from the behavior of others. And we're learning to take responsibility for our healing. No one else is going to heal you. You are. By making ch, -ch, ch changes, we are. You facilitate your healing. Regardless of the people around us. We're learning to take responsibility for our healing, regardless of the people around us. So whether my parents want to get better or not, they are making changes. Very slowly. I, the, my elders are very stubborn and set in their ways. It's almost impossible to teach them. Just as we may have believed, that we're unlovable. We can become skilled at practicing the belief that we are lovable. A new belief will improve the quality of our relationships. It will improve our most important relationship, a relationship with ourselves. So our new beliefs, as we're redesigning our DNA and our, our, our belief system, right? That's what we work on here, straightening out our own thinking and our own beliefs and all these uh, toxic, unhealthy ways that we might have uh, picked up along the way. We will be able to let others love us like we're a power line, ACDC. Don't block the flow. Don't be your own blockage. We got to be able to flow in and out. We'll be able to let others love us and become open to the love and friendship that we deserve. So today, God help us be aware of and release any self-defeating beliefs that we have about being unlovable and being unworthy, right? Help us begin today to tell ourselves that we are lovable. And help us to practice this belief until it gets into our core and manifests itself in our relationships and we are so grateful so let me get through this one too this is actually today's that was yesterday's family buttons I was 35 years old the first time I spoke up to my mother and refused to buy into her games and manipulation I was terribly frightened and almost couldn't believe I was doing this dang I was 38 when I really stood up for my child. I found I didn't have to be mean. I didn't have to start an argument. But I could say what I wanted and needed to say to take care of myself. I learned I could love and honor myself 
and still care about my mother the way I wanted to. Not the way she wanted me to. And we don't have to be even who our mother expects us to be, right? What if our mother didn't do her work? I'll let you think on it. Baby, baby, I'll let you think on it. I'll let you think on it. When I got back into town in 2018, December 10th, I was on a bus from Albuquerque. And uh, my dad and mom got me a bus ticket. And uh, I called them and said I need to come home. And uh, it's not the first time that's happened. So, they got me a, a ticket. Um, but I surprised them. And I just showed up when I was there. I surprised my child. And I did everything I could to stand up to everyone who was way too hard on my child. Something inside of people when they love to antagonize with games and manipulation, stick their fingers in your faces. I said, do not stick your finger in my child's face. They say button pushers, but it's actually in Don Miguel Ruiz's books that it's a wound. People know our wounds, our weaknesses, and sometimes they like to just stick their finger in it to make themselves feel better. The better someone knows you, the more they could do it just to hurt you. Just to knock you off your square. Now that's different than correcting and guiding, right? There's no games and manipulation. There's no excuses and lying. Who knows better how to push our buttons than family members? Who besides family members do we give such power to push our buttons? It's not a button, it's a wound. And what's the trigger and what's the lesson is the real question. No matter how long we or our family members have been recovering, relationships with family members can be provocative. One telephone conversation can put us in an emotional and psychological tailspin that lasts for hours or days. Sometimes it gets worse when we begin recovery because we become even more aware of our reactions and our discomfort, especially when we get into therapy, right? And we might try to um, correct situations. That's uncomfortable, but it's good. It is by beginning this process of awareness and acceptance that we change, grow, and heal. I highly recommend this book for anybody that's new here. I need to get up the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius and how that time shifted. We became self-healers. Dr. Carolyn Mays is the author of these are on my lots of these are in timeless spiritual teachings uh folder in my playlist if you go look at my playlist and why people don't heal and how they can sacred contracts and our belief our wounded inner child all all of the things that shape us one man developed pancreatitis because of the belief he was going to end up a beggar so those are amazing books that were given actually by an intuitive chiropractic shaman. He did ayahuasca as well. It's one of the books he uses. <clears throat> when somebody has their knee pain, they ask, he says, what's been going on in your life? He wants to know what kind of stressors, 
What do you got going on that's causing the pain? What are you eating? What are you believing? How is it manifesting? Since the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body and I have the limp in my knee, right knee. I had horrible knee pain and hip pain on my right side. Limping. Still going with a thorn in my side. And he lined me up and I haven't had a limp ever since. I left that man in Nevada and I went and saw the chiropractor. See, he was supposed to pay for me to go to a chiropractor. Ryan. So, it's probably a good thing he didn't because it probably wouldn't have worked. Because I still would have been under his rule, under his thumb, like I was a doormat. That he wipes his shoes off on and then tells me to clean it up, right? The process of detaching in love from family members can take years. So, the process of learning how to react in a more effective way. And when I have irrational fears of abandonment and being alone, you know I had enough after I did ayahuasca and he just talked to me like trash one last time and I said, you know what? I didn't say anything at the time. I said, Lord, put a guard over my mouth and seal the door to my lips. And later I came back and said, I'm leaving you. And he was in shock. No, you're not. I said, and you're paying for a ticket? You take me to Las Vegas. You're getting me a hotel, and you're taking you're getting me a ticket to go to California. And he was like, "What? You're not going to California? You crazy girl! I'm not paying for that. I don't think so." I said, "Yes, you are." And I just left, detaching and love from anyone, even family members, can take years. So can the process of learning how to react in a more effective way. I never thought I could live in my parents' house and stay sober. We cannot control what they do or try to do. Oh, we can't control anybody. Everybody's given free will. But we can gain some sense of control over how we choose to react. So I humbly apologize if I've reacted harshly. And sometimes my words come out a little passive aggressively. I'm always doing my best. Stop trying to make them act or treat us any differently. It's something in them. Don't take it personally. Unhook from their system by refusing to try to change or influence them. We only can change ourselves. Yes. That's why we stop trying to change anybody. We work on us constantly, always. The only person we can change and control, yes, we do have self-control, is our very own self over our thoughts, over our actions. Now, it's good to react. To never react is to be manipulated. To be too passive, not assertive. To not even stand up for yourself. Their patterns, particularly their patterns with us, are their issues. Politely hand them back to them. How we react or allow these patterns to influence us is our issue. Yes, how we take care of ourselves is our issue. We can love our family and still refuse to buy into their issues. We can love our family, all of our family, all of our soul tribe but refuse their efforts to manipulate, control, or produce guilt in us. People that are in severe chronic pain, I need to ask them what they're holding on to. My gram, she won't stop writing the paper. She won't stop listening to Catholic radio. Her little fingers are twisting shapes. She won't let go her hands. She is in severe chronic pain. She will not be still. She doesn't listen to her body. And she is so angry in assisted living that she has no control. 
my sweet groom. Her birthday's coming up August. August 1st, Jane. Jane, Suey Lady Jane. 8118. That's my grandma's birthday. She's going to be 84. Oh, we just had dinner with her. Yes, we did. Oh, my gram. She's so angry, she can't even write straight. Her writing is so angry. I could just feel it. Feel her fresh. She can't even read her own writing. See, that's uh, like anxious writing. My dad's is very the same way. Mine changes. If I'm relaxed and in a good mood, it's flowing freely. If I'm not, it might be real choppy and angry and harder to read. It kind of changes like my clothes and my eyes. All of it changes like the moods and the seasons. I'm really learning a lot about my Pluto in the 11th house. My Midheaven Scorpio in the 11th house. And Uranus. My Midheaven Pluto's in Virgo. Uranus is in Libra in the 11th house as well. In a 13 house system. 13 houses and 13 signs. If anybody wants to ask more about 13 sign astrology, I'll do your 13 sign chart for you for free. You just have to send me an email. My contact information is in the in the description box below. My intention was never ever to make money off of YouTube by giving out free wisdom and knowledge. So, I don't want to put all my donation information there. If somebody wants it, they can ask me for it and send me an email. That never was my goal. That's why I didn't ever finish and complete my Patreon account. I didn't want people to have to pay for the same information. We can take care of ourselves with family members without feeling guilty. We can learn to be assertive with family members and everyone without being aggressive. We can set the boundaries we need and want to set with family members without being disloyal to the family. We can learn to love our family without forfeiting love and respect for ourselves. Today, help me start, help us start practicing self-care with family members, all of our family members. And we're so grateful. Help us to know that we do not have to allow their issues to control our life, our day, or our feelings. Help us know it's okay to have all our feelings about family members without guilt or shame. It is okay to honor when we're feeling frustrated. Honor when we're feeling sad. That's in one day my soul just opened up. That book has vanished, a $40 book. My cousin said she has it, but... It's whatever. I read it three times, but it's such a wonderful book. It's in the playlist as well. I think it's pinned to my channel, actually. Remove the victim. Oh, dang. I just flipped open to remove the victim chapter. Number eight. We're so careful to see that no one gets hurt. No one, that is, but ourselves. Oh, shucks. Remove the victim. Give up the ghost. Give up the ghost. I need the victim videos down below every. No victims. And I gotta. What I was trying to say about Rosie the other day is she came in panicking. She's been here for since 2019. Sweet Rose. Met her over on 11-11 and a couple of love tarot. 11-11. She has to keep swimming. Not code 11-11. 2019. 11-11. Uh, Al-Anon member said that. And she has been uh, so upset about the shots over in Ireland, uh, trying to protect her mother and do what's best, and her beloved, her boyfriend, and 
she came in just so distraught one day. And I kind of had a, a little, I was just frustrated. Something caught me. And I kind of just said it how it was. And it probably freaked Rosie out. She might have said, oh my goodness, I don't see Heather like this very much. And she told me she was so sorry over on the telegram. And I told her, listen, it's it's okay, sweetie. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I sometimes I might be having a bad day. And since all of this is energy, all of this stuff going on in the world, it's it's good and important to make sure we stay grounded. Don't watch all the things that make us worry. You know, a lot of people have really chronic bad physical pain and they get up and they go to work every day anyway and they fight through it they make a way so let's do this today so I'm only reading today's here we left off on the 10th oh dang a war with the ego I'm reading both of them 14th and 15th, talking about the ego. There is a lion, it's called Reaching Superman State, Neschi's Theory. And so I'd like to share that down below. I forget the things that I say I want to share down below in the comment section. Please always check the comment section. I will gain more understanding when I realize there is an I in me that longs to become the I of the spirit, capital I. This is for yesterday. There seems to be a war against the ego. People are cautious about seeming to be ego-centered, ego-driven, and ego-based. As so many are moving toward a more spiritually grounded lifestyle, the ego is taking a pretty, pretty bad rap. It's about taming our ego, right? Unfortunately, few people are talking about the power, the beauty, or the purpose of the ego. It is the ego that inspires you to brush your teeth and comb your hair. I didn't even brush my teeth today. It is the ego that makes you health conscious and body conscious. Without your ego, you could not make steps towards self-improvement, self-development, or self-empowerment. Sometimes I just get up and go, go, go. Getting up and brushing my teeth isn't the first thing I do. Sometimes it comes an hour or two later. Sometimes on a bad day, I'm really depressed. I might forget to brush my own teeth. It is what it is. The ego, I'm always doing my best and I don't beat myself up. The ego is a good thing. It's a healthy thing. It is the ego that makes you health conscious and body conscious. Without your ego, you could not make steps towards self-improvement, self-development, or self-empowerment. Healthy ego. Sigmund Freud. The id, the ego, and the superego. The ego is the little self that desires to become the self-fulfilled and fulfilled by the truth. It is the I of you that will motivate and support you in becoming the I of spirit. When the I of you is tempered by the knowledge and the love of I in you, the ego becomes your source of grace and compassion. When it is understood and disciplined, the ego is a safety net. It is the ego that will warn you about walking alone down a dark street. Your discernment will get you too as well. Your higher self when you're in tune with it. It is the ego that warns you not to click on things. Your healthy higher self. The ego that brings your attention 
to your attention the fact that you are being spoken to or treated inappropriately. Oh, yes. A protector. And when people are violating the healthy boundaries that are set for this channel and focused on all the good things, the positive things. The ego made Sojourner Truth stand up to, in Rosa Parks, sit down. The ego, when tempered by the guidance of a well-nurtured spirit, is an excellent source of guidance. It serves as a map and a compass. The ego would be stubborn and cause you to never quit. A healthy ego. It serves as a map and a compass. It is only when the ego is left to its own devices. Oh, devices. When it's not spiritualized by the power of prayer, self-discipline, and the influence of the spirit within that it becomes a problem. Spiritually deprived is what's happening. They People are too technologically overloaded. That Lucy meltdown and technology overload. It'll all just, they are, they can't live without it. I was just reading about Scorpio in the 11th house. Uh, in, in, with the 13th house chart, it's in the 11th house. And a 12th char chart sign. So I'm looking at both of them in my 10th house and 11th house. It says how much I do love to be alone. I'm the keeper of secrets. I'm not, I'm not supposed to tell them all. A psychology is my absolute passion. I'm reading all about this. Until today, you may not have understood, but I think a lot of the Leo in my chart still makes me a public speaker, not hide in the background. That's a, like a Scorpio uh, secretive thing. Se very secretive Scorpios. See, mine is an equal balance of a lot of fire and water and earth, fire, water, earth. And just a little bit of air. Until today, you may not have understood the role that ego can play in your spiritual development. Just for today, examine your ego. Determine if your ego is a little I, a small, lowercase I, searching to fulfill itself, or whether it longs to be a big I, a capital I, a uppercase I, to fulfill a grander purpose of spirit. So, just for today, think about why you capitalize the first letter of your name. Your middle name, if you have one, and your last name. The H in Heather, the D in Dawn, the K in Kayla, the K in Kinney. Because you are the spirit. That's why we capitalize the I and the G in God. And the G in Goddess. So today we are devoted to checking in with and checking up on our ego. So I'm going to get right through this. July 15th is today. We will gain more understanding when we realize we are always in touch with all forms of life and those who have lived. Yes, and their spirit never dies. They're still here with us. This book I highly recommend. She's amazing. Ayan Levan Zant. It's called Until Today. She's got another one called Faith in the Valley. And you could get like one book a month. Treat yourself to one beautiful recovery meditation so that you can do these every day. I've been doing them for so many years. And they still help me. Every time I need it, something else clicks the next year around. It just goes over and over. You just start the next year. Always working on your selfie. People never really die. See, there's a reason I read this today. There's a reason Spirit told me. Thank you. I'm going to share this today. They leave their bodies. They end their physical existence in order to continue their spiritual journey in another form. On another plane. What's the galactic tone today? Eleven. 
I needed to hear this. 12 it is. Last night it was. Understanding, that's what we're working on. To have us a gift of great capability of retrospection. It is this ability that allows to will. This is Mayan magics, M-A-J-I-X. Just remember that much. And you'll always be able to find it for the Zulkin calendar. This is the ability that allows 12 to connect disassociated parts into a new functioning whole. The energy of 12 is that which, rep which presents a new piece of understood information or accumulated experience to be applied. So we will gain more understanding, right? When we realize we are always in touch with all forms of life and those who have lived. We just have to call upon our spirits and ascended masters. This has been sideways the whole time. Imagine that. Oh, well. Oh, well. We're, uh, we're embracing the gifts of imperfection not having to control learning that everything's not perfect so it's a good thing we don't have to see everything perfectly to hear right people never really die we don't die isn't that fabulous news we don't have to fear death they leave their bodies they end their physical existence in order to continue their spiritual journey in another form on another plane a person who has entered the realm of existence that we call death is never beyond your love. The thing we call death is not a cold or dark or a frightening and cruel existence. It is an essential part of life that teaches us to believe in what we cannot see. Once you know a person, you will always know a person. Yeah. But people do change, right? Once you've loved a person, your love will keep them alive. I wish that was true. Sometimes I do. But if my child was still alive with their suffering, still be happy, would my child's spirit be at peace or now? Life continues after death. One sentence can just make you break down. And it hits you like a shock through the heart. And there's no one to blame. My child put those drugs in, in, her, in her body. After she got out of the psych ward a couple of weeks before that from Chicago, she threw all her meds out the window. <laughs> and then last time they promised to me they would keep her until, until there was a bed open and then she wasn't going to be okay. And I just knew when they said she was coming home, it was not going to be good. <laughs> Highly intuitive. The water signs. My Scorpio made heaven. <laughs> and my Pisces, Aries son, Aries Pisces son, Cusper. <sighs> Once you've loved a person, your love will keep them alive. Her spirit's still alive, and the love of my child and my spirit guide angel is what keeps me going on. <laughs> All the ways my child still communicates with me. <laughs> and you can't even tell everybody all this stuff because they might try to lock you away. They give you all kinds of misdiagnoses. It's the best to just lay low. Life continues after death as long as you remember the warmth of another smile. 
the gentleness of their touch, the meaning they brought to your life, and your remembrance of another. Oh, dear. Death cannot overtake life. life. Life simply changes its form. When you spend time honoring the dreams of one who has changed, even in a physical form, people can change, right? When you continue standing up for the things they believed in and doing the things you love to do together, you are saying, this life continues to touch my life. I choose to honor my child every day and continue moving forward and I get stuck on the despair and the painful memories. Healing myself, remembering who I am and loving myself. It's the sign. A star energy is the multiplication of all things in abundance. The stars have been associated with the fertility of rabbits for its ability to multiply. As each sun in the sky, star persons shine equally in all directions. This natural tendency of harmony and balance can become a compulsion, motivating star to be too agreeable and too generous. Rejected gifts cause fear and resentment. When a star believes it's given too much, they are weakened or may even collapse. In this black hole state, stars are prone to verbal jousting and arguing to force their point of view on everyone. Oh, yes. Well, let me see what my child says again. I can't remember everything, but we were both Horus in Egyptian astrology. 8 a 5 and wind. Oh, and the breath of spirit. Uh, sin communication of all kinds, the gift of empowerment. The fifth element, spirit. <laughs> so sad, I call. I said I found my child cold and blue and no longer breathing. And it's the breath. And that's what my kid kept saying. I can't breathe in a panic attack. <sighs> I can't breathe. The memories are too bad. After I... My child, I just saw those videos that I was doing teaching spiritual warfare. The day my child shot up DMT was 320 of 2020. Oh, man. And once you open that door, all the memories, Pandora's box. But it's happening for everybody now. This life continues to touch my life, always. <clears throat> Continue standing up for all the things that we believed in, right? Stay in touch with your loved ones and send them your love. Use the memory of your time together as a motivation to keep going. Always remember to honor the special ways the one you knew and loved touched their life. Your remembrance offers them a victory over the thing called death. Until today, you may have misunderstood death. You may have been grieving or mourning the loss of a loved one, believing they were forever gone from your life. Just for today, be devoted to being a living reflection of the dreams and love you shared with someone who has passed on. So trust your guardian angel. To grieve deeply means you really loved someone. So today we are devoted to living our life as a demonstration of how deeply we have been touched and loved by those who have changed the form of their lives. <coughs> Continue standing up for yourself. 
all the way. <laughs> <coughs> Let me see here. Let's get one grief card. One grief card. We are so grateful working on our grief. Oh, uh, grief is a reflection of love. Most would rather love and grieve than to have never experienced their loved one in this lifetime. Better to have loved than lost than to never, never have loved at all, right? Better to have loved and, and lost. I need to see about those messages from heaven because I know there are some. Let me see. Let's get one angel card, one of these small ones. See, this is, would be so much easier on my voice. And you know, when I feel like I'm being unheard, I, d I do get louder and then I lose my voice. The affirmation here says, be aware of your language and thoughts. The most powerful statement you can ever make, feel or think, is thank you for the lessons, right? Thank you. For making us who we are. Thank you for this journey. Thank you for the breath of life. Be grateful for all the blessings in your life. As we acknowledge the divine order of things. The universe responds with ever greater blessings. You are a powerful creator. Act like it. All you say and think resonates through the heart of creation. And creation responds accordingly. You're getting back everything that we put out. So forgiveness. Holding on to a past hurt is preventing us from moving forward and achieving your heart's desires. Let it go. Forgiveness does not mean that you condone another's actions. It simply means that you are no longer willing to be a perpetual victim to a particular person or event. Blame is a waste of precious energy. Bless and surrender the past. For in doing so, you will reclaim, reclaim the joy of life. Yes, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Ooh, I just pulled that apart in half. Relinquish control and release fear. Oh, well, I just split the deck. Just where I pull it apart. As soon as I see it, release fear. Today we're devoted to living a life as a demonstration how we deeply have been touched and loved by those who have changed the form of their lives. Physical form, 3D realm. Oh, you're not going to be able to see that, right? You'll be flipping your phone if it's got auto-rotate. Your phone's going to be moving every time you try to look at it. Ah, it'll drive you crazy. If you got a computer laptop, you might be trying to turn it upside down. Ah. Turn it sideways. I can see you all now. The gifts of imperfection. Oh, transform our anger. Just fell off the top. Um, release fears on the bottom. Just fell off. Transform your anger. She's got a kite. She does. What number is that? 34 or 7? Use your anger as a catalyst for change. In the past, anger has given you the right to blame other people for your limitations. It's time for you to face your anger and allow it to energize you instead of draining you. If there are things that are not working in your life, take responsibility and steps to change them. You can no longer use... No, you can no longer use anger 
to give you a false sense of pride or justifying, criticizing, putting down, or, or resenting others. This is your opportunity to redeem yourself. Apologize for your behavior and become kinder towards yourself and others. So I did humbly apologize. If I've offended anyone, when I do get upset, sometimes my words don't always come out right. It happens. I'm human. Thank you so much for forgiving me. I'm sorry. I love you. The whole Pono Pono prayer. I'm sorry. I love you. Where's Hannah Moore? He knows it. Who knows it? The Hono Pono Pono. If you are angry about a specific situation in society, transform your anger into passion and create positive change. Absolutely. Transmute it. If we are angry about any situation in society, transform, transmute our anger into passion and create positive change to make a difference. So here's the action before I go. And I love you all so much. Short and sweet. With whom are you angry? And what would it take for you to let go of the anger? Who or what are you blaming? Take some deep breaths. Ooh, take a deep breath in through your nose. Do your diaphragm. Hold. And release. Center. Calm. Breathe. Breathe in the air. Right? Don't leave me. Imagine your anger in the shape of an uncontrollable lion. Ooh. Raging and hurting everyone. You wouldn't want to piss off a lion. I'm a Leo, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Rahu. I would say they shouldn't have messed with my cub. And I'm really doing as best as I can right now. Imagine your anger in the shape of an uncontrollable lion raging and hurting everyone. See yourself outside yourself and become aware of how your anger affects, affects others. The angry heart. So ask a lo the lion, imagine your anger is a lion. Ask the lion what it's most angry about. And then ask yourself, what is the lesson that I am to learn from this experience? That I'm denying. What is the lesson? If you're taking notes, this is the question to ask yourself. No one else. Trust yourself. What is the lesson that I am to learn from those experiences that I'm denying? As this is all part of the experience, right? Put on some powerful music and move your body with the intention of freeing your anger. Release it. Some people are storing trapped energy. Anger. Unforgiveness. All kinds of things. Secrets. All kinds of things. Write a letter expressing your anger. Get it out. If you are... And don't take it out on others is the thing. Don't hold on to it. And don't spew it anywhere. This is on page 77. 77. And it's a 34, card number 34. Anger Management, 424-819. Write a letter expressing your anger. If you are blaming anyone in the letter, rewrite it until you take full responsibility. Then burn the letters. Breathing slowly and deeply through your nose, practicing your breath. Bring blue rays of peace 
into your body. Breathe deeply in through your nose to your diaphragm. Inhale. And exhale. Bringing in blue rays of peace into your body. Now see you notice she's in red. Passion. The lowest root chakra, the fire signs as well. In your mind, create a symbol of peace and visualize it several times a day. She's got red ribbons in her hair. She's sitting on like one of those pillars like they would have at a Colosseum back in ancient Greece or Rome. Dang, there was a 200 mile deep earthquake in Italy. 200 kilometers, I mean. I had to measure that up. I had to change the settings. So it's kind of like, think of it like this. How would you talk to a volcano if a volcano was already angry, per se, since it's alive? We could just use this as an example. Would you go out and yell at it? Or would you talk sweetly? to a volcano even. She's thinking about taking a new direction to transform anger. Yes, indeed. So, I'm gonna go. I've got things to do. I'm very, very busy in the summer usually. And um, I don't always do a reading late at night. But I do realize that over in the UK, they're on a totally different time zone. And uh, Jane was up until 2.20 something. And uh, I'm trying to get some things set up in my life. I've got, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on over on Facebook with promoting self-healing. And um, a giveaway from our sister Trina. And uh, she does want me to share this stuff. So if anybody does want to join, please let me know. The giveaway is on 717 Michelle's birthday. Superstar, the star card. So um, if anybody does want to join, please let me know. And she's trying to get other people that have done all their work, all the people that have done their work and are in a place to be helping and guiding people that need more help as more people are stepping away from fear um the guides we are very overwhelmed it it it's very overwhelming all of it all of it is i almost quit facebook because all these people were contacting me at once and i had i have to just say slow down whoa you need to calm down all these chatterboxes watch this go here do this Watch this video. I like, don't even do those little voice clips and videos all the time. I like to just read words, reply, and get out. Or I could be in there talking to people all day. Trying to get me to download WhatsApp. Uh, in my emails, they need some money, but none of their stories add up whatsoever. If you just evaluate things and watch words and what people are sharing is what they're watching. What they're trying to get you to watch. And if your, by your intuition says don't click on the clickbait, don't do it. Nausea keeps asking me for money. And she said she needs money for her children's schooling. If she needs some money for some food for her kids, if she's really hard up or something, I could send her a little money for some food. But I'm not going to be hustled saying you can't pay for schooling for your kids when you're a huge part of the Roman Catholic Church, you say. And I don't understand why all these people can't help each other. Where is it all? And why is, is she um, asking so much for help? Um, what's the real story? I only, she only shares a little tiny bit of information because 
I don't even know that she can hear and understand every single one of the words that I say. I don't know. I don't know what's authentic anymore. It's hard to trust people. Yeah, I've been so betrayed by everyone that ever said they loved me so many times that I just don't click on things. A lot of this stuff is non-essential, not need to know basis at all. And I just am trying to mind my own business over here and do my own thing. And uh, I would, but I can't afford to pay for her children's schooling if she hasn't paid for it in 10 months. <laughs> This would be, I know she's a real person, I believe. I don't know unless somebody's using her name. Who knows? I don't speak Urdu. But I love you all so much. I send abundant vibrant healing, love, and light into every heart, every mind, every body, every soul. All the elements who we work with, the love is what we really need. Love is the answer to all our questions. In this reality, in this divine time and space, we get love explosions all over. We're all over. Love is all around you. Love is knocking outside your door, waiting for you. Is this love made just for two? To look around and you'll find love again I know do 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 this is crooked in here now and I truly don't know why it won't hang on the wall right that's what I like to remember I love you KK said, I love you. 1122. That's on my cousin's birthday. Joseph. That's also Kenny's, Kayla's twin cousin's birthday. Timothy John. Andrew John and Timothy James. <laughs> Biblical names. Because they're missionaries. <laughs> on our dad's side. 1122, double numbers. So 1111 and 1122, 11 days later. 9922 adds up to 2020. I'm excited about the Feast of Mary Magdalene. I have eaten the past couple nights, and when I don't eat food, I can get very ungrounded. If I don't put anything solid on my stomach, it can make me more anxious. My Lakota sister is very, she scolds me and she's very strict and she's very bossy and says, Heather, I told you. And um, I don't know. She thinks that because I did ayahuasca, she says she doesn't do drugs. Uh, so it's just people's words and judgments are funny. The way they talk to me. She doesn't have children. So she's been less. Oh so. Incompassionate with all her QAnon stuff. I can't even talk to her anymore. So many people I just can't even talk to anymore. So. I love you all so much. Have a beautiful day. I'm doing my best. I did eat something so I could sleep well. I did. So. I just didn't have like a huge meal or anything. I just snacking on some crackers and uh, some peanut butter. Peanut butter and crackers and just some snacks. I had a piece of cheese, nuts, something. At the very end of the day at, uh, at one o'clock in the morning after I've been up since seven or whatever. You just got to get something on your tummy and have a good rest, right? Because I keep waking up my dreams all the, all the day, all the morning. When I'm at home alone in my world, I don't even have to smoke that much weed. 
Nobody's here bothering me. Nobody's uh, violating my healthy boundaries, talking about things that make me real upset. Um, nobody's trying to manipulate me, use me, or um, trick me, or get me to do, or talk about things I don't want to, or follow things I don't want to do. In my world, I don't even have to smoke that much weed. I can do whatever I want. I don't, like, when I got home from prison, I didn't even want weed. I wanted clear thinking, but that man and all his false beliefs and expectations and pressure and his family nearly drove me crazy, and he wanted me to smoke weed so I would be in a better mood, always. The same way my dad tries to do it to my mom. And we got things to do. The women always have a whole lot more to do, usually, usually, not all men. Not all men. So please don't take absolutes to when I say. Usually I say m most men. Not all. There are some very righteous men who do their part. Some men have OCD as well. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Or CDO. Otherwise, uh, CDO. Compulsive obsessive disorder. And the letters are in the right order. No. Compulsive disorder obsessive. <laughs> CDO. Compulsive disorder obsessive. Compulsive disorder obsessive. I'm going to start saying it that way. <laughs> Compulsive disorder obsessive. And all the letters are in the right order. Just the way they should be. Just like they should be. You guys, I've got to find this pair of knickers. i got to see what I want it. I gotta see if I can find another pair of knickers in a can. Maybe my childhood. It was causing unnecessary, unwanted attention. All right, I'm out of here, you guys. I gotta go for real. I love you all so much. Keep shining, superstars. That's all right, you are. I'll go do my selfie care and brush my teeth now. Ain't no shame in that. At least you didn't have to smell my breath, huh? Say, tweet, baby, tweet, baby. Your breath stinks. <laughs> right? That's what the lie detector said about armpits. Everybody has stinking breath sometimes. Every day when you wake up. There's no new reason to be ashamed about these things. We're just humans. Doing our best to make it in this world. And I'm so proud of all of us. Whoever you are. I hope you know how especially essential you are in this world. And all this other stuff, worries, it's not essential. We don't die. We are infinite, amazing, powerful spirits. Our greatest fear isn't that we're inadequate. It's that we are powerful beyond measure. Marianne Williamson, it's a wonderful quote. Look it up. I love you all so much. Keep shining, superstars. Deuces.